Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Earlier today, or yesterday, depending on where you live, Nvidia finally took the wraps off their next generation GeForce 40 series graphics cards. It feels like this has been a long time coming given all the leaks and rumors over the last year or so. We've spent some time analyzing Nvidia's presentation to give our thoughts on the new RTX 4090 and RTX 4080 series GPUs, and to break down some of Nvidia's rather confusing performance reveals that obfuscate the important information, though that's become pretty standard for Nvidia's last few launches. Let's kick things off with a recap of the hardware. At the top we have the GeForce RTX 4090, which is based on the new Ada Lovelace architecture built on a custom version of TSMC's N4 node. This GPU is a bit of a monster in terms of hardware, packing 16,384 CUDA cores and 24GB of GDDR6X memory on a 384-bit bus, plus boost clock speeds for the GPU up to 2.52GHz. As expected, it's a power-hungry card with a rated TGP of 450 watts. It'll be available on October 12th for $1,600 US. Then we have the RTX 4080 16GB, which packs 9,728 CUDA cores, quite a substantial cutdown of the RTX 4090 there. It features boost clocks of up to 2.51GHz plus 16GB of GDDR6X memory on a 256-bit bus and a 320W TGP. Pricing is set at $1,200 US and will be available a bit later with no date specified. There's also the RTX 4080 12GB, which as the name suggests, drops the amount of memory to 12GB of GDDR6X. However, with that we also get a reduction in memory bandwidth from a decrease to a 192-bit memory interface, and there's fewer CUDA cores at 7680 clocked up to 2.61GHz. A 285W TGP for this particular card and a price tag of $900 US. Of course, in addition to the models themselves, NVIDIA announced a whole bunch of features relating to the new ADA architecture, which we'll give our thoughts on later, including DLSS 3, but for now, let's talk about some of the key reactions from just the GPUs themselves. The big one, which I think has been coming for some time based on NVIDIA's naming of other products over the last few generations, particularly on the laptop side, is that we have two RTX 4080 GPUs with vastly different specifications. This is bad for consumers from a number of fronts, and it's not something I'm happy with given the multitude of naming options NVIDIA has at their disposal with numbers and suffixes like TI. There really is no reason to give these GPUs such a similar name unless NVIDIA wanted to trick customers in some way. The way NVIDIA primarily talks about the RTX 4080 series is highlighting the differences in memory, 16 versus 12 gigabytes, making it seem like this is the main difference you're paying for. On first glance, this would make the 4080 12GB seem like much better value. It's $300 less and packs otherwise the same performance, right? Well, it's not until you look at the spec sheet that you discover this isn't the case at all, with the 12GB model packing 21% fewer shader units and reduced memory bandwidth. These are not at all the same GPU, with Nvidia's own data suggesting the 16GB model could be upwards of 25% faster. This would be the largest difference in performance between two cards named this way, at least in memory. So you can bet everyday non-enthusiast customers that don't know a ton about GPUs will end up purchasing the worst 12GB card, expecting the full RTX 4080 experience, only to discover it performs a lot worse, something that could have been avoided with appropriate naming. One theory I've seen from some of our Discord members and the wider community is that the RTX 4080 12GB is really what used to be the 70 tier card, like the RTX 4070, renamed to the 80 tier to soften the blow from its high $900 price tag versus $500 for the RTX 3070. This is definitely plausible given how many people get caught up in comparing series versus series across generations, and having such a huge price leap for the 70 series would cause a lot of disappointment. It's further strengthened by the 4080 12GB appearing to deliver similar performance to the RTX 3090, and Nvidia have often delivered top tier performance from the previous generation in the next generation's 70 tier card. However, to be honest, I don't think the actual name series matters all that much, as what matters most is the price to performance ratio. If the RTX 4070 was massively faster than the RTX 3070, and also cost a lot more money, it could still be reasonable if the performance gain outpaced the price increase. There would need to be some reshuffling and additional entry level options, and consumers would need to get used to the new naming system, but ultimately, in that sort of scenario, the name doesn't really matter. It's the hardware and price that matters relative to the competition and previous models. 
But when you have two cards that will appear in product listings as nearly the same GPU, both with RTX 4080 naming, I don't think it's reasonable to have a significant performance discrepancy. The clearer the naming scheme, the better. Let's talk about the supposed performance of these GPUs. Nvidia tends to provide the most obfuscated performance numbers of the big three hardware vendors and the least amount of performance testing when talking about new products. Testing is often conducted comparing new cards to strange matchups from the previous generation or with exclusive features on the new cards enabled, which are only found in a very limited number of games, to further enhance the apparent performance difference. That's definitely the case with these performance charts, which have stuff like DLSS 3 enabled on the RTX 40 series GPUs, more on that later. When looking at the three standard games Nvidia has provided, the RTX 4090 appears to be around 60-70% to faster than the RTX 3090 Ti. This can be brought up to two times faster or greater when additional ADA features are supported in the game, but I would expect the performance gain in most titles to be similar to these three games here. This is a little lower than the hardware would suggest, as the 4090 has 52% more shader cores and up to a 34% higher boost frequency, however the 450 watt TGP may limit this to some degree as it's the same as the 3090 Ti. This is an impressive gen-on-gen -gen performance uplift for the flagship model, one of the largest performance gains we've seen. For example, with the upgrade from Turing to Ampere, the flagship model gave us about 50% more performance. If some titles do deliver double the performance, that would be very impressive. As for value, there's really two ways to look at it. The RTX 4090 is much better value than the RTX 3090 Ti's launch price of $2,000. It's cheaper and should be faster. It also compares favorably to the MSRP of the RTX 3090, delivering a huge performance uplift for only $100 more. However, unfortunately, the MSRP is no longer relevant in the current market. Going on current Newegg pricing, the RTX 3090 Ti is available for just $1,030, while the RTX 3090 is $960 at its cheapest. This would give the RTX 4090 similar price to performance to the RTX 3090, factoring in its large price increase, which isn't very impressive, though not atrocious given you typically pay a premium for top tier performance. For the RTX 4080 16GB, we appear to be getting roughly 25% more performance than the RTX 3090 Ti in standard games. Again, quite a good deal relative to the 30 series MSRP, given the 4080 16GB is cheaper than the 3090 and similar in price to the RTX 3080 Ti. Nvidia does claim 2 to 4 times faster performance than the 3080 Ti, but this seems to be based on special cases rather than general performance. Based on the current market, this would again be similar price to performance relative to the RTX 3090 and even the RTX 3080 Ti, which currently is available for $800 US. So not a huge deal of progress there, and it would be up to features to get it over the line. Similar situation with the RTX 4080 12GB, Nvidia is showing performance slightly below the RTX 3090 Ti, so similar to the RTX 3090 at $900 US. This card basically slots into the existing price to performance structure of Nvidia's 30 series lineup. The RTX 3080 10GB is about $740 these days, so still above its $700 MSRP. And given it's only slightly slower than the RTX 3090, this new RTX 4080 12GB could actually end up delivering less performance per dollar than the 3080 series from Ampere outside of Ada Lovelace enhanced titles. This sort of pricing and value proposition is pretty underwhelming from a generation of cards that does exceed the performance of existing models substantially at the high end. My only thoughts are that the cards are very expensive, though I guess it isn't too surprising given many people expected pricing to be poor with the next generation. After all, Nvidia has learned that people will pay exorbitant amounts of money at the high end, plus we're still in the recovery phase of a pricing boom and there are inflation pressures around the globe. But it's hard to make a definitive call without seeing benchmarks, and I'm only going off what Nvidia showed at their presentation. It's always a bit of a shame when the sheer performance picture is let down by other factors like pesky pricing, because otherwise I would be super pumped for the performance on offer with these products. It seems that many of you share similar thoughts on what Nvidia showed from a value standpoint. In our poll earlier today, about half of all respondents thought what Nvidia showed presents terrible value, with price to performance going backwards. A further 20% or so believed it was poor value with no improvement in that area, while 20% thought it would give a small leap in price to performance. That's not a good reading for Nvidia, given these reactions are based purely on what they showed at their presentation with full control over their messaging and marketing, as of course no independent reviews are available yet. 
The issues with naming and pricing have overshadowed some of the technical enhancements NVIDIA are making this generation. In particular, DLSS 3 looks like a very interesting and cool technology, taking DLSS one step further to provide AI-enhanced frame generation, similar to frame interpolation technologies that we've seen in TVs and other hardware for some time, but built specifically for games and GPU hardware. The idea being that DLSS 3 would use data from current and future frames to generate significant portions of frames, up to 7 eighths of the display pixels according to NVIDIA. This process uses optical flow and the optical flow accelerator present on NVIDIA GPU hardware. While DLSS 3 is coming in October and will be available in over 35 games at some point, unfortunately it's exclusive to NVIDIA RTX 40 series hardware. The reasoning here is that it requires the enhanced optical flow accelerator in the Ada Lovelace architecture. While this accelerator is available in previous generations, apparently it isn't good or fast enough for this technology, so it's restricted to RTX 40 cards, which sucks big time for owners of older RTX cards and does make you wonder how well DLSS 3 would actually work on those products, especially the high-end ones. With some sort of performance overhead to run, it's also unclear how much acceleration is possible above a certain frame rate, as many of the examples NVIDIA showed were running games at a low base frame rate. NVIDIA have shown off demos of the technology, but it'll take a full visual quality analysis to see how it appears in real life. I definitely think it's possible to use AI interpolation in this way for games, but with so many pixels being reconstructed, it may have visual quality implications, like what we see using DLSS Ultra Performance Mode, which generally looks pretty bad in motion. Luckily, DLSS 2 is otherwise quite good, so with further research and enhancements, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how this step forward looks in action. Another key advantage of Ada Lovelace are enhancements to the ray tracing cores. This is a big deal as we move towards the ray tracing era and performance requirements increase substantially. NVIDIA's third gen ray tracing cores are more powerful and support new hardware acceleration capabilities such as micro mesh engines and opacity micro map engines. In particular, NVIDIA claims these RT cores can build ray tracing BVHs 10 times faster using 20 times less VRAM through the use of displaced micro meshes, while there's also twice the ray triangle intersection throughput. All up, NVIDIA are claiming 191 RT T-flops of performance on the RTX 4090 compared to 78 for the RTX 3090 Ti, which is a 2.4 times improvement. NVIDIA also claim up to 2.8 times, which I guess must refer to another GPU pairing. Either way, this would outpace the raw rasterization performance improvement. If the RTX 4090 is roughly a 1.7 times improvement on the RTX 3090 Ti, but ray tracing performance goes up 2.4 times, this would reduce the performance impact of ray tracing in games or enable more ray tracing effects to be used. It's crucial for next gen cards like this to have ray tracing performance outpace rasterization so that the cost to using ray tracing is reduced. ADA also includes 4th generation Tensor cores, although outside DLSS there aren't many gaming specific use cases for these hardware accelerators. There's a new 8-bit floating point engine that delivers more performance, but this will I guess largely be useful for workstation users. Another key inclusion are dual AV1 encoders from the new 8th generation NVENC engine. AV1 decode has been supported in NVIDIA's previous architecture, but AV1 encoding hasn't been possible until now. It's clear at this point that AV1 will be a major successor to H.264 across video playback and streaming, serving features like AV1 encoding is crucial for the future. OBS will support AV1 encoding in an October update, and Discord will be integrating it later this year as well. Then we have shader execution reordering, which is an ADA-specific architecture enhancement that reorganizes inefficient shader workloads into an efficient stream that is said to improve performance by up to 25% in games. This feature, along with DLSS 3, is why NVIDIA has shown some titles delivering massive performance improvements on RTX 40 series GPUs relative to Ampere, while other titles don't benefit as much. We could see quite a wide range of performance figures when we benchmark these cards. As for Founders Edition models, the RTX 4090 and RTX 4080 16GB appear to be getting FE cards, with the design being similar to the RTX 30 series. These GPUs use PCIe 5.0 16-pin connectors for power, which are found on ATX 3.0 power supplies. 
However, NVIDIA will be packaging an adapter in the box to use with existing power supplies that have 8-pin connectors, so not too much of an issue there. Interestingly, these cards don't feature improvements to display output connectivity or the PCIe bus. It appears PCI 4.0 is still being used, while we're getting HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4, so no upgrade for DisplayPort 2.0. Neither PCI 5.0 nor DP 2.0 will be that important this generation, although it's possible other GPU vendors will use these features before NVIDIA will. Overall, I have mixed feelings about what NVIDIA announced. The hardware itself looks impressive with a substantial performance uplift, one of the largest we've seen comparing flagship models. There's also some neat features that will be interesting to explore, such as DLSS 3 and improvements to ray tracing performance beyond what we are expecting for standard rasterized games. However, the pricing for these new GPUs is concerning, and there doesn't appear to be a significant step forward in price to performance ratio when compared to the current market. There is still a lot of older GPUs to be sold through from the 30 series, in addition to many used GPUs shortly hitting the market, which could put further price pressure on the RTX 40 series from the start. The odd naming of the RTX 4080 12GB is also concerning for how it will confuse customers and its similarities to what would otherwise be an RTX 4070 type product. In the end, it will come down to benchmarking these cards to see where they fall, and hopefully we don't see further inflated prices upon launch, as has been the case for the past few generations. It is expected these models will sell out almost instantly, but the crucial time period is usually about a month after launch, where we absolutely expect NVIDIA to have cards available at the MSRP, otherwise our BS meter will be fully activated. One thing I would strongly recommend for this generation is to wait and see how AMD responds with their RDNA 3 products, which will be unveiled on November 3rd and will be launched at some point this year. We're expecting strong competition, and with such a short gap between NVIDIA and AMD's launches, it could well be worth waiting to see how both brands go this year before jumping into a new GPU purchase. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you've enjoyed this analysis of NVIDIA's RTX 40 series announcement, please do consider subscribing to the channel to check out our upcoming performance reviews, not just for that, but also for Zen 4 products coming very soon and all the other announcements that we're expecting throughout the rest of this year. If you do appreciate our independent testing, we have Patreon and Float Plane. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord community, which is great for chatting with you guys about some of the latest announcements and all that sort of thing, as well as our fellow members. Nice, great community in there. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.